Hello, I'm here with Sandy. How are you, Sandy? Really good, thanks. Hi, Brett. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Busy week this week. We've got yeah. uh, <laughs> a lot going on. Uh, we've got new starters at Lightning Tools. We've got Microsoft Ignite going on this week and uh, and, and a new release, <laughs> as you learned yeah, about well. last week. So. Yeah, yeah, very crazy. Yeah, it has week. been very busy. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I, I guess you know it'd be great to to talk about Microsoft Ignite and uh, and the sort of uh, announcements that we've seen already. Obviously, it's still going on. We're uh, early days. We're only one day into uh, into Ignite. But um, what did you think to that keynote? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> so so I joined with my Oculus Quest, uh, so in VR and. Um, and it was just it was really inspiring <laughs> to to see what the, what Microsoft is doing. So that was in the alt space VR uh, environment. And um, so we were able to see like during the segment where uh, where they were underwater, the people who were in virtual reality could choose fish and they then appeared in everybody else's reality, which was <laughs> really cool. And then at the end, when they had the, the people from the Cirque du Soleil that were doing a um, their mixed reality sort of uh, program that they're working on, um, those of us who were in VR, I don't know how it appeared to the people who weren't, <laughs> but um, if you were in VR, then you could see, you know, like you went through this tunnel of lights and then we could actually go out into this sort of beach area where the dancers were and there was a campfire and I, I heard somebody say it was they tuned in and it was just a bunch of hippies dancing or something but well, <laughs> but it was yeah, really I'll, really cool so I was watching it on my laptop and sort of multitasking a little bit and uh and yeah um my wife came in and and she uh, she like looked at my screen because I thought you weren't done working yet <laughs> so yeah this just thing going on with music blaring and everything on, on my laptop here so but yeah this is work <laughs> but but it was really cool to see what the capabilities are going to be and then um I found that so interesting that then I switched out my schedule later on in the day and attended a mesh session uh, so it was a developer session which I'm not a developer but um, but the the woman who was demoing the um, development toolkit was showing how you don't really have to use code <laughs> to to create uh, environments that'll work with mesh and they were talking about some of the technicalities behind uh, how the mesh environments are created and things and uh, it was just really interesting and um, the thing, one thing that made me even more <laughs> excited about how this can go forward in the future is when I, I had been a couple of weeks since I had put on my Oculus, and when I rebooted it to to join the session, I found that uh, I had gotten an update where now I could use my real hands rather than the controllers. And it was so, so cool. I mean, I, I just just imagining the kinds of things that that you can do when um, when you've got the whole mixed reality environments and yeah. uh, and using real real reality with um, yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I guess if you know if you haven't seen um, yeah any of this technology yet <laughs> uh, you know it, it, it's really great seeing it in VR we uh, so, so the keynote was basically done with uh, what looked like an auditorium. Um, mm -hmm. So you had the, the stage seating and there was an mm -hmm. actual stage that was sunken. You were looking down on that with a presenter that wasn't, you know, just a character or anything like that. He was a, an actual person um, mm -hmm. presenting, but on a, you know, vi a virtual stage surrounded by an aquarium. So there was literally like a whale swimming around him <laughs> and other fish and so on. And then he was showing the capabilities by switching into different environments and, and things like that, which was, uh, yeah, really powerful. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, the, uh, the the old space VR stuff, um, you basically had the normal type of people um, that were, you know, sat in the, the, the gallery seating um, so they could interact with each other as well and, mm -hmm. and things like that and mm -hmm. uh, also provide feedback. So, I, I mean, this kind of thing was tried earlier um, last year as well at, at yep. the, uh, the, the the collaboration yep. summit. So, uh, so Addis Hugo, who's a, a Microsoft regional regional director and, and also a Microsoft MVP, he uh, was the founder of the uh, the collaboration summit and also Collab Days, but also put together a 
um, a networking event for sponsors of, of, of the conference. So that was all done using a similar technology. Um, but yeah, you were this uh, sort of avatar that you made up and you designed mm -hmm. that represented you and you were able to walk around the different booths and, and talk to different vendors and things like that and mm -hmm. also engage with each other. But this um, just you know, took it even further mm -hmm. <laughs> by being able to see somebody um, that is a real person and, and uh, presenting in that way it, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. So I, I can see a real use for that, you know, um, as people are working remotely more. Um, you can imagine, you know, company meetings uh, and mm -hmm. that type of thing. If you've got 500 attendees in a company meeting, then everybody's working at home. This would certainly make it a, a much more engaging and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and better presentation. It'd be a, a, a really good use of that technology, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. It's much, it, as you say, it's much more engaging than like a t screen full of people on Teams. Yep. Uh, that's that's what I had found at Collab Summit too. And like, that's why I did my birthday party that way and why yeah. I bought the Oculus really, because it because it is much more like being with people. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, absolutely. and when yeah and then when you get people as holograms too that's even better <laughs> yeah and, and people like this it's, it's it's one of the benefits you know lightning tools is a company that is very distributed anyway and pre-pandemic um you know if ever we had uh, uh a leaving do or a celebration it's not like the whole company could always get together because you've got people distributed in different countries um Whereas now there's more and more things actually becoming available to do virtually. Uh, so our Christmas do was a virtual wine and cheese tasting um, with a vineyard in France. And we also just recently had a, a virtual escape room where we had a live actor and we were controlling that person, basically. To, yeah, that's to actually a use case I was thinking of yesterday that that would be very cool in mixed reality where we didn't need the live actor. We would yeah. all be in the room and we could manipulate the things ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely, that would be awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. Everybody I've spoken to in Lightning Tools has really been enjoying the fact that they can all get together and have these conversations with each other and and, and do some team building and things like that without actually being in person and jumping on a yeah. plane. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I can really see that that's a good fit <laughs> going <laughs> forwards. But yeah, so some 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 great things there, and I know uh, you're ahead of me in the sessions, mostly because of your time zone. I think by the time <laughs> Ignite right. started yesterday, I was already whacked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've got a whole bunch of sessions all lined up in my backpack, my virtual backpack to watch. But cool. you've attended some already, so what's been your favorite announcement so far? Um, well, besides Microsoft Mesh, um, then I guess I would say the other thing that I am especially excited about in the Power Platform, which is kind of the area that I focus in. <laughs> aside from SharePoint and Teams, um, is the availability of uh, Power Automate Desktop uh, included with Windows 10 now. So, so currently you can go download it um, as of yesterday, I believe. <laughs> um, and then you can automate things. So that's one of um, the remote desktop, um, yeah, uh, RPA, robotic process automation uh, offerings that Microsoft has had for a while, but it involved a pretty hefty license previously to, to use that. But now you can use it for personal use by just downloading it, being able to automate things on your desktop. So that could include, uh, you know, I'm busy trying to think of some use cases as, so I can test it out because I haven't really been able to play with it in the past because I don't have a license for it. But um, you can do things with your files, like with Excel files that exist just on your desktop, rather than needing to use uh, Cloudflow to work with Excel files that are in OneDrive, for example, um, or just or other things where you're opening browsers and doing things with websites and stuff like that. Um, so I'm really excited to try that out there. I think they said there are something like 400 different actions that you can do, um, and then you can integrate it with Cloudflows as well, and that would be for an extra license but but still just the fact of being able to have a um, an automation tool um, so it's sort of similar to selenium i think really like you could do things like that with it too um, but it's free with windows that sounds fantastic mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah, hopefully a, a lot more people are going to start taking advantage of that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah nice. that's what their object is, uh, according to the announcement, is it's, you know, empowering more people to to do more with that. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, great, 
Excellent. Um, and I saw something about a, uh, a, a Microsoft FX, the uh, mm, uh, expression power, language. Or power program. FX. Power FX, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, so that effects, but FX. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. Just be clear. Yeah, so that's um a new <laughs> language, I guess, a new in quotes, air quotes, because um, it's basically the existing uh, language that's used in Power Apps currently to uh, create formulas. And that's going to eventually be extended to the other parts of the Power Platform to Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, and Power BI. Um, to kind of bring those into a cohesive way of expressing things, but then also extended in Power Apps as well, like being able to create, um, I'm trying to think of the term that they use, but uh, like where you can define a, a function right in that formula and things like that. So yeah, that that's also as exciting. So just in the fact of creating a unified um, syntax, across the platform yeah because that's oh. been difficult for a lot of people i work with a lot of people who are just starting out in power platform and that's confusing to have to go from the way you express things in power apps to the way you have to express things in power automate for example yeah uh, it sounds like you know that's been a barrier from a lot of people using things like power apps um mm -hmm. as, as well as just getting ahead around the language so if you've got to do that differently in each mm -hmm. in each platform then that's going to be even more confusing mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. so yeah it I mean, it's mostly sense. still Excel-ish. I, mm -hmm. I mean, that um, formula editor in Power Apps is pretty close to Excel. It's a lot of the same functions. Um, but yeah, so then everything will be Excel-ish. Cool. That sounds good. <laughs> How about you? What do you think about what you've seen so far? Yeah, so um, I'm kind of interested uh, in the the whole Teams stuff um, and, and also the Microsoft Fever. Uh, I mean, that's uh, my area i guess so um yeah with, with, with teams i mean actually this is quite often uh the announcements are things that don't really affect us as a company but affect our customers um or, or the way that we develop our products or, or something for our customers and what's nice actually is is something that i really want to get my hands on now uh that will benefit us <laughs> and, and like tools and that is um about the webinar so yeah mm. we've uh, we, we've been um ever since almost day one of Lightning Tools, we've been using uh, GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar uh, to, to deliver our webinars. And uh, we weren't able to make use of Microsoft Teams for the webinars because A, there wasn't the ability to register to attend. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we weren't able to, you know, everybody that was going to attend, which may sometimes be, you know, 50 or 100 or 200 people, you'd have to each time invite them to the webinar so it's just a, a headache uh, to, to be able to do that um, so there's no way of, of, of registering or having that automation where they would receive a link um, to, to to actually go ahead and join it and also for the sales team you know um, of course there's no secret here that you might put on a webinar in order to be able to follow <laughs> up with those attendees <laughs> and maybe sell a product to them <laughs> so um, yeah the the ability to sort of automate that side of it as well so you could see you know who actually attended who was who was focused in on what we delivered and, mm. and in, in the webinar who, who was attentive i guess mm. um and uh, and hooking that into the crm system um mm. so all of that has seems to have been thought about in in teams so now you can have up to a thousand um attendees in in a webinar like a mm. broadcast type mm. webinar so those webinars were there anyway, um, but yeah, it was just missing that registration registration mm -hmm. piece and, and and so on. So all of that looks like that's being um, sorted out. I've not seen it in action yet, so that that session's still in my backpack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really. And I don't think to... it's quite available yet. I think almost, okay. but not so, quite. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, absolutely. That that's going to make a big difference to Lightning Tools, and I'm sure mm -hmm. to you know quite a lot of other companies as well yeah. Uh, yeah. in that regard. So, so that was good. And also, while you're in Teams, is the presentation modes. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, when you are sharing your screen, um, you are this little box in the bottom right-hand corner um, where you can see yourself, but you know, mm -hmm. either. You, you notice that when people are watching you present, they're either looking at what you're doing or they're looking at you speaking. And mm. um, the nice thing about this is it's kind of like a, well, there's several different modes, but one of them I really like is actually being able to have almost like the green screen type effect without having a green screen where you've mm. got your screen share behind you. So you're uh -huh. 
almost like the weatherman <laughs> or, or weather <laughs> yep. person um presenting you know what's going on so, so yeah. that i think would be really useful for for lightning tools as well mm -hmm. especially the webinars and and mm -hmm. that type of thing so, yeah so that'd be really really good cool. <laughs> so there were a couple of uh, favorite ones from from the team's perspective and um microsoft viva we've already talked about uh in 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 the uh lightning tools chats but um i, I think you've uh, started to see some of the more information coming out about licensing and, mm -hmm. and things like that which has come across as surprising so do you want to tell us about yes. that uh well uh, yeah i expected it to be a, kind of an expensive add-on for, for everybody but um but yeah it looks like at least some parts of it are going to be free with certain um enterprise i think e-licenses in microsoft 365 so uh yes yeah, so we still have more to to read and learn about that but um but yeah, it looks like that's going to be available to a lot more people uh, than than I had originally realized, which which will be great because they're you know all the different parts of that the the learning the connections the topics and what was the fourth one? <laughs> uh, so learning topics connections and uh... <laughs> apparently an important <laughs> <Something>. one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've put me in depression now to, to, to think about that one, but um, uh, insights. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should know that because that's the first one I had actually seen in real life. Yeah, the <laughs> topics, the, the... insights, connections, and learning. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, so it should be uh, really exciting to, to see that. I know there's I've seen on some of the Facebook uh, SharePoint groups there's a bit of confusion as to what Viva is still. Mm. Uh, you know, people are saying, is it the new SharePoint and, mm. and things like that, which you know certainly isn't, but it, it's mm. making use of uh, SharePoint and, and Teams and AI and all this other stuff mm. as well. And also, yes, yeah, the, the learning stuff that's in LinkedIn and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So definitely yeah. worth checking out Viva. We yeah. talked too much about it because we've already spoken about it in a previous yeah. uh, chat, but yeah, it's... Uh, it, I think it's going to be a, a great addition to a lot of organizations to, to have mm -hmm. that sort of insight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I guess yeah, just, just before we uh, we start closing out here, um, there's one thing that we nearly <laughs> overlooked, and that is that you did a table talk at uh, yep. Ignite this week. So, so tell us all about that. Uh, yeah, that was really exciting. Uh, kind of exhausting, actually. I, I realized after I was finished because we, uh, it was on Power Platform best practices and the table talks. If you're not familiar with them, they're part of the connection zone at the virtual Microsoft Ignites. So, the I'm idea about is for table, right? Um, like, <laughs> no, yeah. No, but physically, it's it's a lot of those table talks are like 15 people around a table or something right, like that. Right, right. In uh, real life, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this was, um, yeah, they opened it up to, well, actually, they extended the registration to 700 people, but we ended up with about 250, we think, with uh, people coming and going throughout. But, um, uh, and I co-hosted with four others, uh, other business applications MVPs, and so it was uh, about Power Platform best practices, and um, it was really fun. There were the audience was really engaged, and the idea with them is that it's a discussion, so it's not a presentation. So we kind of threw out a couple seed topics, I guess, and um, it and then let the uh, attendees kind of carry the conversation so people could raise their hand and then ask questions or or begin talking about a topic. Um, so that was kind of my, I, my role. I was helping uh, manage the raised hands people. Uh, yeah. And then there was a really busy chat going on with people asking questions. And then we had a couple of our panelists who were helping rate, bubble those up whenever there was something especially interesting. But so we ended up with a lot of conversation about uh, governance of Power Platform and the um, the Center of Excellence toolkit that you can get. and um, and so lots of great information. I actually learned a lot myself <laughs> too about, you know, enterprise level uh, power platform things, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was really fun. Unfortunately, those are not recorded ever. So um, I think probably because of privacy, because there are all of the other people, but um, yeah, we got some, you know, screenshots of everybody in together mode and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really fun. That sounds it. Absolutely fantastic. Well, well done on that one. Thanks. <laughs> great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess uh, that's all we've got time for uh, for, for this week. But um, you know, it's it's been a really uh, 
really busy week as we mentioned at the start yeah we've uh, got a new face in tech support now mm -hmm. so um, look out if you are an existing customer there's a guy called Abinia that will be uh, answering your questions yeah. um, and we've uh, we've also got um, yeah the the lightning conductor uh, release so there is a webinar on the 18th of March so a live webinar produced by myself so if you want to uh, sign up for that one uh, there's a link on the home page of our website uh, or, or under webinars. Not, not in Teams yet, but. <laughs> no, no, it will be soon. <laughs> so yeah, sign up for that one. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So yep. thanks, thanks everybody and enjoy your week. Yeah, see you, Brett. See ya. Bye.